Are you afraid I'm gonna? I'm, no, no, no. I'm sensitive because there was that one time that I. I think we're. Thank you. You ready? All right, we're going to commence. <clears throat> Good evening. Welcome to the special committee of the whole for Monday, June 12, 2023. Clerk Baker, please call the roll. We have Mayor Keith Hedrick, Deputy Mayor Depot, Councillor McCabe, Councillor Norris, Councillor Sheffield, Councillor Piazza, um, and City Clerk Bakira. Okay. New business, public works bill. If you could come up to the desk, and you'll need to probably need to turn that mic on. So we're going to talk about vehicle pur purchases first. First one is a 2023 Ford F-550 with dump body. You can walk us through that. Okay, good evening all. Um, this particular truck um, supports the fiscal year ending 2024 budget, so that's this year. Um, the purchase that I'm requesting approval for is from Jengris Ford. It's an F-550. Uh, the cost for the vehicle is for the um, Truck and dump seventy six thousand two fifty seven point thirty, and for the plow and sander setup fifteen thousand eight twelve eighty, and the total vehicle cost is ninety two oh seventy point ten. Now this particular vehicle is available now, hence the reaching out a little bit sooner. I can't make the purchase until July one when the funding becomes available, but Jengris has promised to hold us uh, hold a truck for us. So. That's this particular truck. Okay, it's replacing number 16. It's a 2005. Uh, also looking at possibly trading that in. I just don't have the value. More than likely, it's $10,000 for a trade-in. So that'll be reduced from the price as well. Okay, it's in the budget. Questions on that one, or would you like me to go to the no, next? No, hold on. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the council on the Ford F-550? Councilor Norris. So you are actually looking at trading in the 2005 in opposed to holding it? Correct. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Carter, or correction, Councillor Sheffield. Uh, Bill, how are you? Um, Very good, sir. What's the mileage on this vehicle? This particular truck is uh, 75,000 miles on it. 2005 model year. So, um, so this, this Ford is a 2023 Ford? This particular vehicle, yes, will be a, the new vehicle will be a 2023. All right, so, so this is, so with 75,000 miles on it? Okay. Uh, the one that we're, the one, one we're replacing has 75,000. This is a brand new vehicle. Oh, brand, okay. Yep, approved for this year's budget. I'm just coming a, a okay. couple of weeks early because we've actually got an opportunity to get one. So they promised to hold us, uh, the truck for us, but they're, they're very difficult to get right now. And you'll find that on the next vehicle that I talk about. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Councilor Piazza. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask, where is it? So when you trade in the other vehicle, the 2005, well, does that one also include the, where are we here? The hopper sander? Does that one also in the plow? This particular vehicle, yes. So it's uh, pretty much like for like. Okay. Again, yep. Exactly. So it'll be 10000 for the whole package, Absolutely. possibly for the trade-in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. In that case, I'll take a motion to move this to the Mayor and Council meeting of 6-19-2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay, Bill, move on to okay. 2021. So we're on to the next vehicle. So this particular vehicle was uh, on the fiscal year ending 2022 budget. Uh, we've been waiting two years to get a truck. This is one of the larger trucks. It's one of five plow, large pile trucks that we utilize, right? Um, the re this, there was an original resolution that was approved back in 2021 for the purchase. Again, because we waited so long, things have changed. We're having difficulties with HP Fairfield um, to finish up with the body hitch and plow. So the reason for the new resolution is to support the truck, 
but to switch over from HP Fairfield to Viking Sibes for the body hitch and plow. Um, again, waiting two years on this. This replaces a 2004 vehicle. Um, it's got 74,000 original miles on it. We're going to actually take the sander that's on the original truck, move that over to the new truck on our own. That saves us about $25,000. It's a stainless steel setup. Um, the cost of the new truck is going to be $91,250 for the cabin chassis, another $73,949 for the body hitch and plow. The total for that is $165,199. We're going to trade in the old vehicle. Again, it's a large truck. We're going to get $28,000 for the trade in on that. And brings us down to a total cost for the city, $137,199. We made out pretty well with the, the trade in. Questions on that vehicle? Councilor Carter? How are you, sir? Just a question. I, I intend to pass it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you when you uh, when you replace items, mm -hmm. um, as such, the um, you're putting what? Yeah, We're actually the, the taking cleaner? the sander. From the this sander. One. Yeah. Yep. So when you do that by yourself, does it like affect any warranties or anything in the future? Like. Not for the truck or anything, so there won't be any warranty on the sander box. No, I know, but as far yeah. as the truck goes, like say the truck, something happens to the truck, they won't no. say something like... Nope, well, absolutely not, because yeah. it's just really a bolt into the bed on the back. It's nothing to do for with the drive $25,000 that you yeah. charge for, they that's charge what, for that? Yeah, so that's what Webby estimated, $25,000 savings by doing that. So. The wrong business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smart. Okay. Councilor Sheffield? Yeah, I was looking at the shipping fees that went up five thousand dollars was there a reason why that, that was just and that kind of that's the reason why we looked at getting away from hp fairfield and going with viking sives and that's kind of why we, we looked into that it was we they've been holding us up holding us <coughs> up there was again that's part of the complications with them and we went with viking sives and hence the new resolution so it worked out well we're still well under the budget the, the, the value that we had budgeted for it okay, okay price of doing business <laughs> any other questions or comments and i'll take a motion to move this to mayor and council meeting at 6 19 2023 so moved second we have a motion and a second is there any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed abstention motion carries okay concrete pavement and milling sure so this is for the fiscal year ending 2024 budget so i won't have uh, the funding for this won't become available until July 1st, right? This was approved for this year's budget. I'm trying to get out a little bit ahead um, by coming to council requesting approval. I'm going to be using Charles Pastoryak. He does all of our paving. Um, and this is for paving of mill and paving for a Beach Pond Road and South Prospect. Um, the intent is really to get into his queue a little bit sooner. we got a lot of work going on this year, so... I want to come, be able to come back to him uh, July 1. When can I get you in here and get it done? Okay. okay. Deputy Mayor Depot. Thank you, Mayor. Um, is this not work that the union would usually do? Absolutely not. So this is the paving. We utilize Pastry Act every year. We do some asphalt work, but it truly is to when we do the sidewalks, the asphalt strips, you know, so we're really just blending back into the road, but we don't do any milling and paving. We don't have that. Um, and then this, so this project, when do you estimate it's going to start? Um, so funding becomes available July 1st. I don't have a, a start date from um, Charlie, but I want to reach out to him and try to get him in the queue sooner than later. So I'm hoping at the end of July, 1st of August or something like that. In how long is this going to take them to do just because this is the busiest time for that road it's a busy time of the road so um right so doing beach pond will take him two days four days to finish that up and then and that's right in front of the beach a little bit so we'll have to detour traffic around to come down tyler or um, central probably depending so we are going to block the whole road when we when we go to when it gets well paved. so more than likely what we will do is 
he'll do half. So he'll mill one side and then he'll mill the other side. That'll be the couple first days. And then he'll come back and pave one side and pave the other. So it'll be a deterrent for traffic. It'll be open, but for convenience, and we'll have traf uh, flaggers out there. But for a convenience, <laughs> it'd be easier to go around Tyler or Central, you know, to get But it won't be completely blocked no, off. No, we won't block it off. And something else we'll do is we'll Good use question. Facebook to get yeah. the information out and let people know alternate routes. Yeah, that works really well for us. Okay, thank you. Councilor Norris. Yeah. So there really is no better time. No, and it won't be on the weekend, so we won't impact the weekend beach going, but it'll be during the week. All right. Yeah. So I, I, I do know that the state contract, mm -hmm. do we look at other companies that do this kind of work that's on state contract or do we figure out these guys do good work we've worked them with them before so let's just keep moving yep yeah. so um so we're working with um director uhas on it and pastor yak is is the the company we've been using um he is i believe on a state contract bid as well so it, it works out really well for us he, he does very well matter of fact he's difficult to get he does a lot of the other towns and cities uh, and that's the reason why i really want to reach out to him to see if i can get him as, as sooner because last year we had you know the last end of the year to do brandegee and, and everything else that was going on so so is this outfit the only ones in essentially southeast and connecticut that do no there are others there are others that do it pastor yak i feel is is the best for the city best selection for the city and uh, ron also would agree with that okay so did we did we compare pricing no no okay no all right yeah any other questions okay i'll take a motion to move this the mayor Council meeting of 6-19-2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion of second. Further, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Aye. aye for which? I oppose. You oppose. Okay. So we have one opposed. Can, can I say a uh, comment? I'm already voted, though. Uh, no, we've, we've finished voting. I understand that. Uh, just comment. Is our question. But we're done talking about this. So we've already voted. This line item is done. We're moving to the next line item. So there's nothing in the rules where I could just ask a question on record? We're done. It'll come up at the next meeting. But, at, but as a city, but as at the mayor and council meeting, you can ask. I don't need to ask it then. I was going to, don't want to waste this time. I want to ask it right here. It's, it's fine. Okay. All right, so. Bill, thank you. Oh, okay. Thank right. you. Chief, yeah. so we're going to talk about cameras next. All right, so Chief, first thing's camera purchase. You can walk us through that. Okay, this is our second set of cameras. They are, we're getting them through the uh, Nuclear Safety Emergency Planning Grant Fund. So these sets of cameras will be down at Thomas Road, which is our, one of our evacuation routes, and CBS and Rainville locations. So they will tie in with the two that we're putting down here and the one on Bridge Street as well. We're using the, utilizing the same company that are putting in the cameras shortly. These are their second batch that we're getting through a grant system which will be tied into our dispatch center. So if there's any kind of backup during a hurricane or a nuclear event or something like that, we'll be able to look at it, see it, and reroute traffic as quickly as possible. Uh, this will be coming out uh, this year, so we're trying to get ahead. We'll get the, budget, uh, get the funding as of July 1. So as soon as we get it, we can order the cameras because I believe the first set were on back order for a few months. So we're trying to get them as fast as we can. Hold on, I gotta correct something here. We're gonna need to go back and make new motions. Cause I had the wrong date. Okay, uh, questions on this, Deputy Mayor Depot. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so the grant is paying for the cameras. Are having these additional cameras, including the ones that we already approved that are gonna be installed, mm -hmm. is it 
costing us more to store that data or are we storing that data? How does that work? Like how long do we store the, the footage and is that impacting our storage capacity or anything else that's going to be additional ongoing costs? Right. Good, good question. We will own the equipment. All the storage will be in-house and we'll own the servers and we will keep them, we'll put it on a rotating basis just like some other equipment we have. So it'll three months, six months, a year, we haven't determined how long we're gonna keep it. But at least we will be able to keep it for three months and if there's, a, if there's an incident that we need to get or look at, we can burn it right away and we can save it on disk or a flash drive. So we can continually run over it. So we'll have all the equipment, it's not like we're storing it in a in the cloud no. that we need to pay more because we've got so much more data or anything nope, like that? No, we're all in-house and it'll, it'll rewrite itself after I don't know, whatever we get determined. Correct, Captain? Yes. Three months, six months, we'll just rotate it. But we'll burn it as soon as we need it. Perfect, thank you. Councilor Norris. But at the moment, do you know what your record length is? Is it 60 days? I do not. Here. Come on. I'm sorry. Because I Captain's actually, done it all. <laughs> yeah, I actually was um, handling that. It, right now it's 30 days, okay? But that's, it can be adjusted uh, based upon whatever our needs are. But with yep. the storage capacity, we thought we'd start with the 30 days sure. initially. So how many cameras do you currently have on the system? We just... We don't have any right now. We're, we're okay. putting four in, in two different locations. Right. And then we're going to put another two in. Okay, so got it. There's going to be a total of two, four, six, All right. three egress in and out of the city. We'll okay. Cover. So this 25,624.40, is that cameras, insulation? It's everything. It's everything. Yep. Okay. Hook up, ready to go. We don't have to do anything. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions on this? Councilor Piazza? Thank you, Mayor. Is there a certain time from the grant to place the cameras in place, or it, there's no limit of time no. through the grant? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I'd like, I'll take a motion to move this to the Mayor and Council meeting of 620, so 2023. Moved. Oops, sorry. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? After the chief is, we do the radar signs, I will go back and do the admin correction on the other dates. Because I said 19th, 19th is Monday, which is a holiday. We'll be having our meeting on the 20th. So, Chief, speed, uh, radar speed signs? Yes, sir, this is uh, what we had put in our budget this year, this coming year, is four speed signs. These signs will be able to be moved around from location to location. We will have hard cases for them to store in when we move in, so there will be no damage, but they will have battery backup, they will have solar panels on them, they will have, they will be able to, their Bluetooth, and they will store uh, information as far as the highest peak traffic, speeds of individuals, tra vehicles traveling back and forth. Uh, we will be able to look at that from in here and determine when's the best time to get officers out there to enforce speeding or when's the peak time and when somebody calls up and say I would like to sign over here we can just pack one up and we can move it over so if we can put it on in front of uh, Beach Pond area we can put it in front of EB on Eastern Point Road where the speed limit's 15 miles an hour we can put it about anywhere so we'll probably do that for a three month period maybe longer certain areas especially with certain times like in the summer we'll put it down at the beach after summer ends, we'll move it other places, other locations. But the, the ability to store the information, get the, obtain it, obtain the information of the speeds, the peak times, and stuff like that would be very helpful to us. Deputy Mayor Depot. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, as you know, I drive a lot. And I have seen what I think are probably the same signs that we're getting. Mm -hmm. And one of my major pet peeves is a lot of them say your speed and it tells you your speed, but doesn't tell you what the speed limit is. So right. when we put them up, is it also going to say what the speed limit right there is? Because there's a lot of places, uh, not 
not in the city because I don't know where you're going to put them, but mm -hmm. I have run into a lot of places where it'll tell you your speed and it'll like flash, but there's no speed limit sign anywhere. So I don't know if I'm speeding or not. It's just telling me what speed I'm going, which is not helpful because my car also tells me what speed I'm going. Um, so is that <laughs> something yes. that is it does it also have that on there because a lot of them don't we we did talk to the um, the vendor at the CPCA conference and we discussed that with them okay. and there are signs that have a spot for the speed limit sign to put in okay so if it's flashing you're speeding <laughs> well, but if it's not down, then you're good but we will have the sign there okay yes um, and then I just want to encourage, and I will, will do this in person when I talk to people, I think this is such a great tool because the only thing we had before was the speed trailer, which one, is bulky and a pain to move around, two, doesn't give you all the information, um, and we're getting four of them, um, which I think, you know, f four is going to be so handy for to move around the city so i just want to encourage residents if they have a problem with excessive speeding in front of their house or somewhere that they notice to please let us know because now we will have this tool to use that will be more effective than guessing which is kind of what we have to do just taking educated guesses on where the speeding when's the speeding Correct. um so i i personally am going to recommend people contact the non-emergency number and let you guys know if they're having issues in their neighborhood um because I do think these will really help. So, thank you. Councilor uh, Sheffield. Uh, yeah, I saw the speed sign, the radar in New London over going towards uh, Eugene, well, the overpass going towards the police station. And I saw their new radar to where it shows, uh, you know, your speed and then, of course, the speed limit right there. Our, will ours be similar to that type of, because uh, I guess when there's no traffic, it just shows the police lights flickering and then, then as you approach it shows your speed is that the big one out front by the pd um not right by it but on the highway overpass coming off a of 95 right and uh basically it's 32 Close coming court. coming towards uh ours will be a smaller sign i think okay. it's like two feet by two feet okay and it'll have the speed limit sign attached to it underneath and it will flash um i don't think it has the red and blues Okay. Like yeah. Some of them do. Yeah, that's the one. No, yeah, that's no the one. The one that has that. Some type. have the yellow that'll yeah. flash. Um, ours will just flash when it, when you're going over the speed limit. Okay. okay. Councilor Piazza. Thank you. Uh, so, when they're set up, th you get information on certain vehicles that are speeding, or just vehicles that are speeding. There is an add-on which we did not look. Well, at this point, we didn't look into. It's. Uh, with these tr signs, you can get them built so you can have the uh, license plate readers on them. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get that to that far. But we got them so we can in the future if we need to, if we would like to, and get the funding for that. Okay. Do you already have set up uh, places that you're going to place them when you first get them? Yes. Like specifically? Yes, in front of the school, Beach Pond Road, and uh, sorry, not Beach Pond Road. Um, in front. Right near Plant Street along the golf course. Why am I thinking? Shackhouse Road? Am I throwing a blank Eastern here? Point? Eastern Point. Bridge Street and Thames. Bridge Street and Thames. We can put them anywhere. But there are four locations we're going to look at right now. Thames okay. Street is one of them. Okay. Eastern Point Road probably in the beginning for uh, all the workers going across. But one other good thing, sorry that you brought that okay. up, is good, is there are cameras on the signs themselves because some, some youthful individuals sometimes like to collect them and when they take them off or if they get them off and they put them in the garage they can gps it and we can find out where it's at and we can go in the garage or wherever it is hidden and get it and then it'll have a picture of the person that actually took it mm. so i thought that was very interesting you told us the last time we talked to the vendor <laughs> that's a good one i uh, just uh, I would personally suggest because we have um, just for FYI and maybe you already know is that we have m uh, many many more bus routes that are going out for the summer a lot so um, I'm gonna say we already have out 20 and we're still expecting more uh, to come in so um, my issue is I am down by Washington Park and with the farmers market coming whatever just last week I was crossing the 
person. I always give him the thumbs up. She looked at me, was just crossing, and this guy just like, Phew. you know, it's just very scary. And um, that area, so I used to come, coming from Clarence B, now I come the other way. Mm -hmm. And either way, I have to cross. I have one and then three that go this way. So, but it's just that area to me is really scary as far as um, was that just speed a of the cut. I'm sorry? Was that just a couple of days ago? Two days ago? That was, let me see, today's Monday. I want to say that was either Thursday or Friday of last week. Yeah. yeah. They're zippity doo on it down, down there. And also, I mean, this doesn't have to pertain to the cameras, but I just uh, did want to kind of throw it in. Um, I noticed today, which I don't know why I've never noticed it before, coming up the hill to North Street, it does say, um, when you have Bridge Street Extension there, or is that still Bridge Street? When you oh, Broad Street, I'm sorry, Broad, Broad Street Extension. When you come up the hill, it says, do not block intersection. Mm -hmm. Coming the other way, it does not. And I've come from Bridge Street over trying to cross, and I, and, and I just look at the cars and give them the, are you serious? Are you serious? No, it's in the afternoon when the EV's coming out. Yeah, well, and I, I can't cross. So, I, but I know there was no sign, so I don't know if there was one and it was taken out for some reason, or you know, I don't know. But I was just right. let's, maybe let's, a good signal. I know okay. it's Let's keep it on the Thank speed you. signs. Sorry. Thank you for your Councilor Norris. These are great for feedback and helping people realize how fast they're going. Um, I would request that we could keep them at the location for more than two days, if not longer. Yep. So at least people, because it, if it is designed to be feedback, then folks that are driving that actually get to see it more than two or three times. Um, we all know that st stats will show most of the people at speed live in right. that very same neighborhood or in that street, and we don't think so often, we just want to get in the driveway or garage. Mm -hmm. So again, that feedback will help a lot. You got a really good price, <laughs> so thank you. Um, but I'm curious, like, why do you feel you need a contingency dollar amount, the 3,892.32, or unless I'm reading that wrong? Well, the contingencies are usually for anything that would happen as far as prices go up or prices go down, I would assume. I think that's what it is. It is um if there are any issues um, during the, prior to the installation or during the installation, okay, it's just a contingency in the event something happens, okay? Because what happened last time, I know why, because what happened last time is we had the money for the cameras. Well, by the time we were able to get the cameras, those prices went up. Mm -hmm. So we had to go to elite lesser, these ones that we just put in here, we had to go to a next model down that we could afford. Any other questions or comments on this? I just had a quick question. I wasn't going to say anything. Councilor Carter. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to pass it anyway. Um, because I, I like it. It's, we need it. Um, I wasn't aware of the um, the uh, the option of the 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 uh, plate readers. Is that like a significant um, like difference in place? It's, it's a bigger of a box unit that goes on the on this. They have it in a trailer. As well, but they have a bigger box that would go on the, the pole that would be more and once, of a permanent location. And, and do we know once you get the the plate reader and indicated speed, right? Um, by statute, are you allowed to issue? Can you issue tickets based off of that? Off of that? That I think I'm not sure about that one because I know they have to be tested every now and then. Okay. The radar. Okay. Because if that was the case, that 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 would be like aesthetically. I I obviously well, with my based on my experience with law enforcement and just yeah. knowing particularly where I, I know people speed. I also know one of the reasons why people may speed there and that um, it, it's, it's a, a difficult location to get is because you can't really put cruisers where there's no place to get off the side of the road. So it's pretty much a, you know, um, specifically, like you said, in that, that Bridge Street to Thames Street section. Once you're on Thames Street, they're gone. There's no really no way, you know? If that was feasible to get a box where you could actually issue that, that would actually be pretty good. And I'd, I would be willing to back some of that, I'd be willing okay. to back that as far as us purchasing something like that, just because of the feasibility or non-feasibility of having law enforcement presence there because there is no place to to run laser, you know? Right. So. Correct. Because we all know the signs are going to be great. 
and they're going to slow people down. There's a down. one place. There's but a you're going to have to enforce it somewhere. Like once you go on towards, there. once you go down Bridge Street, there's a place. <laughs> we know they, they sit at the the Circle Motor or the one. Right. That's the one location, but that's going down Bridge Street. Once they turn that corner, it's to the races all the way to all the way to <laughs> to um to EB, and that's where we have to actually get them. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it became an opinion that we don't need speed humps, which I think we do. But I think something needs to be done as far as that. Understood. <laughs> Councillor Norris? Is this the venue to potentially discuss the purchase of one or two plate readers? Hmm. We would like now, to. Now? Well, we can make a referral to public safety. We could do that at the next mayor and council meeting. But. We're, right now, we're, we're, the recommendation is to purchase these four signs, or four, uh, yeah, right. four right. signs, and then to evaluate them while we do additional research on plate readers. So these will be these will be used and needed, and then we could do the others and add on. This is just a general question. The, the, obviously. The, this is good. Anything, right. anything to deter speed. You sure. know, I was just thinking as far as longevity wise because it's, you know, living down there for all those years and being on the law enforcement side, it's right. frustrating. There's some times where I just, <laughs> I'm, one, I'm a, you know. <laughs> one thing that we did discuss with the with the LPRs, license plate readers, is do we want them stationary or do we want them on a cruiser? You can get them on a cruiser. You can drive around all different locations, and it'll automatically read license plates. So four antennas, four cameras on a car, and drive around. Or do we make them here where we sit them for six months or six months and then move them around? Mm -hmm. That yeah. was where we were at in the discussion yeah. with the captain. Yeah, Which I was one? asking particularly about the um, the speed because I didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. it, and you, you don't you don't you don't know that, right? The if camera you can actually do that. That's that's I'd have to check this. Something you can look into. All right. So <laughs> let's keep this on this. Anything else, Councilor no? Piazza? Well, just uh, um, off of Councilor Norris's question, so you had said it would go to refer it to public safety. So I'm just wondering with that, you know, how long of a process that is, and that is if it goes through that and they approve it, is it something plate readers can be automatically attached, or are we looking into something again to hit the budget? I mean, it will be hitting the budget, but I mean, right. oh, no, we can't attach it to these, so we have to get something more upgraded. Understood. And then it's, them, it's like, pointless. No, it's not pointless. Well, well he, said he, already, he said that these are already you should be a free for you. Is that right? Before. It's just a discussion. Right. That's what he yeah. explained. It. Right. We were, yeah. we were uh, advised that they yeah. could be upgraded. They could be upgraded. Okay. My, mis my error. I didn't hear that. Okay. Any other? Councilor Norris. So procedurally please allow me, is we don't have a mayor and council meeting next week. Yes, we do, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, right. Because I was just going to say, does that give the chief time to figure out how much the addition would cost and come with a new resolution next week? But I, I don't, I don't plan on doing that. I plan on referring this and let them do their research, and then we can come back to the council mm -hmm. to do that and not to not to rush them next week. If you're if if okay. if the council says we and this is why I want to refer it. If the council says we want to do this and this is all we want, then we'll pull this motion and we'll send them away to go do something else. The original intent of this was to get these signs. These are really good signs. They're used in a lot of places. We have found out that there's additional capabilities that we can add on. But what we were originally going to do was put these up first and then determine if we wanted to go with the add-on information. So, so I think what would have been the most appropriate then, if we know these add-ons, is bring that conversation to council, have that conversation, and then come with the appropriate motion versus doing this step one, then hearing that there's something that could be added. I think some of us like that idea, but 
we're not going to act on that. We're going to wait another three weeks, four weeks, Maybe. and it just seems piecemeal together. But I, I, I understand the process. You want me to pull it? If so, I'm about to no. say if you want to want to move it. If no. you want to move it, vote for it. If you don't want to move it, don't vote for it. Deputy Mayor Depot had her hand up, Earl, and then we'll get back to you guys. Deputy Mayor Depot. Well, uh, a few things, but I, as the chief said, we can add on to them. I don't, personally, I'm not in favor of delaying this because we don't need to delay this in order to potentially add the other thing. So it doesn't make sense to me to to table this motion or set it aside or anything like that because we can approve this motion and then if the chief gets enough information, he can come with a motion to add the other thing whenever. It's gonna take the same amount of time whether we vote on this now or we wait. We'll just approve it later, which won't make any sense. So I, I don't see the logistical reason to wait and vote on the whole thing when this has already been, this quote's already been worked out because also I assume we'd need to get a brand new quote from the vendor, which would, might take them some time. And who knows, I'm just not in favor of delaying when we've already worked out all of these details. We know that there's an option. So, and the chief now knows we're interested in it. So I don't, I don't see any reason to, to delay this particular motion. Councilor Carter, you had your hand up. Yeah, just uh, 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 two two questions. So, um, for starters, um, I I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Chief. Um, we would actually have to, and I'm a, I, I'm with if 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 we had plate readers that can actually enforce speed. That's to be clear. That's different than just plate readers, mm -hmm. right? So there would have to be research for that. So we wouldn't get something if we couldn't enforce speed, right? So um, that's the, the, fir the, the first thing. And then the second thing, question would be to you, is even if we could, say you, got a, say you got an answer, say you got on the horn and called the guy or girl um, and said, do you have, are these readers that can enforce speed, right? How quickly, right, could that be kind of turned over or would that be a long gated time? So do we know the answer to that? I do not, but okay. I can find out. So with that said, I'm for passing this and then re re um reevaluating the add the add on um afterwards. You know, that that's my opinion. Councillor Piazza. Thank you. So the mission of placing these is specifically what? What's our main mission here? The main mission is to alert the residents or the people visiting and the residents their speed that they're going over the speed limit in an effort to slow them down which will in a long term hopefully prevent accidents from happening mm -hmm. obtain all the data of how many cars are traveling through when is the highest the peak time of speeding is it you know eastern point road when the kids are going to college or are they when they're leaving the school or they're going to the beach when is the best time for the officers to go down there and enforce the traffic Okay, and so my next question to that would be, do we have any evidence-based information that shows e the effectiveness of placing these signs? And to place the signs for the purpose and the mission that you're saying, and if so, that's why I'm looking at the plate readers to see that if that would be on top of that. Like if we already have the evidence that, yes, we have people speeding, now we're going to place the signs. It's kind of like a one, two, three, four step. But then, then well, that's not working. Or we know this for this. We can place the. I mean, it's, it sounds like I think that they probably that maybe that has been done. Where this is where we think they're speeding. We don't have the signs. Or when we had the big bulky ones, that we kind of have an idea. I'm assuming that part of this is also from citizen complaints, yeah. um, right? So that's why I'm looking at the plate reader, kind of like you know. If we already have evidence-based via big bulky signs, citizen complaints, we're gonna just, so we're gonna put these. Um, I've seen them down uh, on Ocean Avenue, London, and different places. 
and they blink, but they, I'm not sure if they have plate readers or not. Um, but that's why I'm saying I was wondering if we should do the plate Most readers right that. away. Well, the ones that Groton County bought last year uh -huh. and the ones they just purchased this year, uh -huh. all the ones in East Line where I live, mm -hmm. they don't have plate readers. Um, they're just a deterrent for speeding, mm -hmm. and it allows you to have the four mobile ones that we would have to move from one location to another mm -hmm. so we can get the whole city, the one bulky one we leave for six months, but it doesn't give us the data that we want. It's just the speed sign. And then we'd move it to somewhere else. Right. So best practice, or do we have data that shows the effectiveness of these signs? I do not personally have it. I just from talking with the, the chiefs from the, the local towns mm -hmm. next to us, they work tremendously. They work for they work for either slowing them down mm -hmm. for long periods of time, mm -hmm. but you have to enforce it after. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the signs is going to get there, and everybody's going to get used to them, right. and right. you're not going to be afraid of being stopped and ticketed. So you have to have enforcement after a certain period of time, mm -hmm. so they don't think you're just throwing them up there for the heck of it. Mm -hmm. now, there's always that chance that somebody's going to say, "Let's see if my speed, uh, my my rate, my speedometer works correctly," and go 60 mm -hmm. or something to that effect. Right. So you Thank have you. to enforce it. Thank you. Councilor Norris? There's lots of evidence that say this stuff really does work. And I agree with this. I would vote f for this. I'm just simply pushing the envelope because sometimes I feel conversations should have come to us or included us or conversations on a staff level, no fault of the chief, should have been expanded or enhanced. And it just seems it. this conversation should have happened, I guess, last week, two weeks ago, wherever they happened. So, can, can, can I just say, I think we're getting confused. License plate readers read the plates. They don't do right. anything about the speed or anything, okay? And the speed signs are merely calculating the speed of the vehicle. So they're not, they're recording the data, but it wouldn't be able to. Sure, that's what, that's what I was asking. Yep. I was saying if it's a plate okay. reader, this is a non-discussion, but, but if it's enforcing the right. speed, it, it help, helps us out, you know? I don't know if you can give tickets in the state of Connecticut from plate readers. The, there are some local areas that are trying from to plate readers? You can, if they're uninsured, unregistered, you know? Right. Right. Debbie Mayor Depot. I, I just wanted to point out, as the chief just said, that um, we this did come up and we talked about it at the budget meeting, and maybe that's where Councilor Norris's concerns could have been brought up because we discussed what they were for and where they were going to be and when we would be buying them. Um, so it, it did come up before, just to be clear, so we're all on the same page. We have talked about this before. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay, I'll take a motion to move this to the Mayor and Council meeting at 6-20-2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Captain. Okay, so before we go any further, we have three motions for the two trucks and one for the paving that had a date of 619. The intent was for the next mayor and council meeting, which just happens to be the 20th. So I would like to administratively change those dates to the 20th with the consensus from the council. Okay. That's what we'll do. We'll change them to the 20th instead of going through and redoing all the motions. It is on the website for the 20th, though. Yes. But when I did my, when when I pulled my, when I'm doing my notes for me and I pulled up my thing, I just put the next Monday. Mm -hmm. So. All right. The Grand Utilities Water Rate Ordinance. That'll be fine. That will be the final. So it's an ordinance. It's got initial approval and final approval. Final approval will be next next Monday. So that's automatic. Tuesday. Or next Tuesday. <laughs> it's it's automatic at the next mayor and council meeting. So a question on that one. It's well, it's automatic. So that's why it got on here. But we decided we weren't going to discuss it and go through it. But go ahead. So. I'm seeing that Eversource, potentially their electric rates are coming down as low as 30% over the summer. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know how they're doing that, but Groton utility rates are not being re-looked at. That's not what they're No, it's not. Well, we get, okay. well, this is water. That's electric. Yeah. I mean, if you want to reach out, we can talk later. And if there's if there's something I need to refer to the uh, ground utilities, I will. Now, Eversource is also being helped by the state legislature. So. So that's good conversation. Thank you. Okay. So, just to let you know, this is going to be on at the next mayor and council meeting. All right, Parks and Rec, new appointment to the youth advisory board. Uh, there's a motion here for Kristen Minow. We have an opening, and uh, so you have her information for there. And any questions or comments on that? All right, I'll take a motion to move that motion to uh, to resolution rather to uh, Mayor and Council meeting of 6 20 2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Sierra? So we're going to go to economic development, climate resilience planning services update. update. Zancy plan. Um, this is bringing back um, the proposal to work with SLR for our climate resilience capacity building. Um, so you guys did see a proposal a couple months ago um, for this. It has been revised based off of comments from this body, um, leadership and staff, to incorporate um, more in-person workshops. The first iteration had a few virtual um, workshops proposed but we feel like it would be better and we'll actually get more out of the experience if it was in person as well um, there were an increase in their hours because they will be doing a public hearing to incorporate the community resiliency plan and this capacity building work into our plan of conservation and development so there is a I don't have the exact figure for the increase, but there is an increase from the two proposals, but I just wanted to bring this back to you guys so you can understand why. Um, Any questions or comments? Uh, Councilor McCabe? Uh, the resolution here has 25,995. Is that? That's the new number. That's, 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 right. mm -hmm. that's, that's the new number, it? not in addition to, right? Correct. Yes, the, that's the new number. So it's going from 18,485 to 25,995. Okay, thank you. That's correct, right, Sierra? Correct. Okay. I'm Councilor sorry, I Norris. Missed, I missed why. I'm sorry. She, the why is for, in the original proposal, we were looking to do some virtual um, meetings. We have decided now to do all in person. Um, that was based off of feedback that we got from multiple sources. And we also needed um, additional hours for them for the public hearing and everything that is required to incorporate both the community resiliency plan, all of the work that will be done during the capacity building into our plan of conservation and development. Any other questions or comments? Deputy Mayor Depot. I know that you won't know this exactly, but how much would it cost us to hire a person, or I guess maybe the mayor would know this better, to hire a person that could do this work, that has the experience to do this work? Yeah. I don't About. know. Well, it's a full-time, it's going to be a right. full-time person, so it's probably going to be at least well, let's see. The town has a resilience mm -hmm. person, right? Yep. Do you know what her salary is? No, I can try to see if I can. Look at uh, that's okay. Oh. So I, I think she's around 75 plus benefits. So, so I, I, the reason that I'm asking that is I know that some um, residents sometimes don't understand why we hire consultants. Um, but, for example, this is going to cost us, you know, under $26,000 and to hire someone that would do all this work would cost us 
more than that because if that's their salary 70 grand then we got benefits and all of that so mm -hmm. um i just wanted to make the point that um i appreciate like looking at it from that perspective if we hire a consultant we are saving a lot of money because as a small municipality we don't have the capacity to hire for every position that we need um that would be helpful so um i mostly just wanted to draw a contrast between those two mm -hmm. because i think people don't quite understand how much it costs to, to do things in-house mm -hmm. um and i know we use contractors for a lot of different things in the city that if we were a bigger municipality we would hire someone for mm -hmm. um and there, sorry no, uh just to add on to that there's also more than one person right i think there's a team of four yes there's a team of four that we so that also with. supports so there's different skill sets that are being utilized here as well thank you councillor sheffield um Thank you. Uh, at CR, we've used Malone and McBroom before for consulting, correct? We've used this yes, so Malone and McBroom was bought by SLR Consulting, so they merged. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right, but the name is familiar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, take a motion to move this to the mayor and council meeting at 6 20 2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. And then the appointment of uh, Phelan Fontville Smith to the EDC. So you yes. have the resume uh, for her. And we're just looking to add her on to the, uh, as a regular member, the Economic Development Commission. Councilor Sheffield. Will we be? introduced to uh, was she um she was trying to make it on zoom tonight she couldn't make it but okay. um yes at some point in time she will be here before the <clears throat> board to do an official introduction okay thank you i know her she's good people she <laughs> any other questions or comments on this okay seeing none i'll take a motion to move this to mayor and council meeting at tw of 6 20 23 so moved second we have a motion and a second any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay, thank you, Sierra. Thank you. And thank then, you, Sierra. And then lastly, we have the Juneteenth proclamation. We have our Juneteenth ceremony on Saturday at 11 o'clock. And this is the proclamation from the Office of the Mayor, City of Groton, Connecticut, proclamation Juneteenth Independence Day. Whereas Juneteenth is a cultural observance celebrated by African Americans commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas the first Juneteenth was celebrated June 19th, 1865 in the state of Texas after Union soldiers arrived in Galveston with news that the Civil War had ended two and a half years earlier and that enslaved, that the enslaved were now freed. And whereas President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation effective January 1st, 1863, had little impact on the citizens of Texas because of the minimal number of Union soldiers to enforce, enforce the executive and absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And whereas the June 19th celebration later became known as Juneteenth, a time for reassuring each other, for praying and for gathering remaining family members. Now, therefore, I, Keith Hedrick, urge the citizens of the city of Groton to join together in observing the historical significance of Juneteenth Independence Day in America. And when it's thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of, of the city of Groton to be affixed the 17th day of June 2023, signed Keith Hedrick, Mayor, City of Groton. So that's what we'll be reading uh, on Saturday. And the council is encouraged to attend, and I hope you can come out. Uh, we have lots of things scheduled for that morning. Yeah. Here at the, probably out there on the, if we have good weather, it'll be on the steps. If, if not, then it'll be inside. Okay. What time would that be? 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. Let me double check my calendar since I've already had a calendar faux pas here. But. That is correct, 11 o'clock on the 17th. Is there any reason why we're not doing on the 19th? Yeah, because the, I don't know if you were here, but uh, no. 
the people that are running the event are available on the 17th. Their recommendation oh, was to do it. Because they're going other places, obviously. Correct. I got you. Weather looks good. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, New London, New <clears throat> London is doing like a two-week celebration mm -hmm. of Juneteenth, which is pretty impressive. They had uh, at the Hempstead House this weekend. I didn't get a chance to to go there, but Juliet went and said it was great mm -hmm. uh, turnout and, and wonderful events there. So, uh, so that's that. Uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Attention. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out.